and welcome. We're here in Kiel, Germany's sailing city. Kiel was the host city for the sailing competitors of the Olympic Games back in 1936 and 1972, so it's no stranger to sailing action. The industrial city on the Baltic Sea has a strong connection to the water, and the Ocean Fleet Flyby is part of the Festival of Sailing that includes the infamous Kiel Regatta Week. The Kiel Fjord weaves through the heart of the city, meaning that the people here are never far from the water, the sailing, or the action now as they're approaching and it's 11th hour racing fully lit up great conditions out there now the conditions will decrease as they come towards the turning mark in keel and behind 11th hour racing team is team holson prb traveling equally fast at the moment they're doing around about 11 11 and a half knots on the water right now uh, it's great to see these amokas lit up full throttle Finding the breeze, finding the perfect conditions, this close to shore, this close to a lighthouse, to spectator boats, and to know that it's going to get even closer. It's beautifully spaced out. We're going to have really good opportunity to see each boat as they come in. Plenty of time to get the cheers from the crowd before the next boat comes in. They are literally boiling now just with their Code Zero but it really looks a stable ride. They're not up and down, they're not hitting the water. It really is allowing them to shine. These sails, you know, they are built to go through all the wind ranges. I, I know we've got some bigger head sails and smaller head sails, but ultimately they need to be able to stand up to just about every type of punishment that they are going to see. And at the moment, they need to be there for this medium conditions here, trying to find that nice bit of power and the sailors are doing a really nice job. We managed to pass a mark in the, in the middle of the town of Fukim. So it's a very narrow place with a lot of uh, spectators boats and fans. Very nice ambience, but uh, it's a little bit tricky when you are going at 23 or 25 knots in the middle. <laughs> For 11th hour racing team, with all of these people out here at the moment, you know, absolutely cheering them on. The really good news. We've had really good pressure for 11th hour to come in here. And as you say, the rest of the fleet that were turning around the turning mark to line up for this entry into the Kiel Fjord have lost the breeze. They're not, they haven't got the same conditions. So they're, as you say, racing a different course. Now they're bouncing off the eastern side uh, of the Kiel Fjord. Now they are making their way back over. So we are seeing some jives and this jive is going to be the first of a few and it looks like we're going to have a really nice bit of separation here a chance to enjoy each boat in its turn and as we go back here on the virtual eye you can see just how much that lead is growing for 11th hour racing team you know what you're absolutely right we were talking about the breeze getting lighter in the river and it kind of has but my word it's got lighter or at least the angle has really changed out to sea so it's funny how what should have been a compression has actually ended up being a stretch. Hey everyone, we're making our way into Kiel right now. We have an excellent amount of people all joining us coming in. I think these are all local kids from the Yacht Club and some other team members from Goyo we spotted out here. Oh, it's pretty awesome. 11th hour racing team coming down to the corner. They have got another jibe to go. And from there, they're going to be lined up with the large white square that's going to be the rounding mark. Oh, there's something going on. There's another turn going on here. There's obviously some sort of problem for 11th hour racing team. They have jibed back over, potentially a bit of a problem maybe with the autopilot there for a second. I can see Charlie Enright just looking out of the hatch on the right-hand side. And there it is on the right-hand side of your main picture with that J0, a little bit slow to come in, but they have room, they have time. The important thing is to get it done right, not necessarily get it done quickly at this stage. They're going to have an awful lot of tacks to go. And now it's a luff round the bottom, so they should be able to get that J2 in, but I cannot see the clue of that J2 coming in hard. So what we're seeing there is a compromise between um, making things complicated and, and speed. That could be famous last words from Chelly right there, That's calling the only two more tacks. That's like a kiss of death, that is. That means that there's bound to be loads more to do. As we saw, oh, the wind pity. can be quite fickle. 
Yeah, what a pity. I mean, look behind them. Look at this lovely Ocean Live part that we're seeing there with all of the... Uh, I mean, I was wandering down it this morning. There's plenty of opportunities to get food, sit down, enjoy things. There's all sorts of stalls and entertainment. So they're also now tapping because they see the green mark. That was an edge of the river. They probably couldn't go further than that. So that's the limiting factor when they're in this restricted area. They've got a little more space opening out and then coming towards them at a great boat speed is Holson Team PRB. Coming in at 20 knots, so they're going to be passing. But they... Let me give you a bit of an update. We're just coming through the most manic crowd. It's amazing to see how many people down, uh, down here. It's just absolutely insane. Team Holson PRB making their way down the river and very happy to be there as well. Now, obviously, 11th hour racing team are a long way ahead and with the points as they are, that's not great on the overall scoreboard. Again, enjoying these great conditions that we saw with 11th hour racing. And as Georgia was saying from on board, they were absolutely amazed at the fleet and the volume of boats and people they've seen. Oh, the passing, the waving of the hello and the goodbye. <laughs> That's it, absolutely. 11th hour racing team on the way up. Team Holtz and PRB on the way down. The difference of sails, the difference in speed and heel, clearly visible. Two boats in very different modes as well. We've got a ferry in the front here. This car ferry is uh, doing manoeuvres here for the docking. And I don't care what you might think about power giving way to sail. Team Holtz and PRB are the ones that are going to have to find a way through here. I think they're going to try and cross the stern of the car ferry. They've got enough control to do it. The danger now would be a big gust, forcing them to bear away. As I say, that's a little bit more heel coming onto the, uh, in, onto the boat, but they're going to be able to make this. It's going to be close to the stern of the ferry. Definitely going backwards. You can see the wash coming out. That is actually close, as close as it looks, I would say. I mean, I, I held my breath then, because if they'd had to go around the front of that boat then... It's... Just to bear away, finding a little bit of a puff just to go down. Thank God they did not have to go into the wind shadow of that car ferry, because then, then they'd be off the pace, out of momentum, and they'd be zigzagging their way down. Looks really, really painful, but at the very least, it does mean that they don't have to do two jibes. They are going to need to do a bit of a tricky turn and up onto the breeze. And with this big downwind, let's not forget, we did see 11th hour racing team do an enormous bear away and a furl of the Code Zero. The mark, there's the turn. Team Holson PRB have now done their long, painful soak, but now they can turn a little bit more back up. Now rounding that white mark, the Code Zero is away, the J2 is ready to go, following the same sail plan, the same choice that we saw from 11th hour racing team earlier. It's a tough call. I mean, and they had nobody chasing them down. But here we go. We're going to see them round this mark, back up wind, and the exit where they're going to then pass Beatham in third place. Here comes the tack, and because they're on that J2, they should be able to just bring it over from the starboard side to the port. Now it comes round, and they can bring it onto that tighter sheeting position. Exactly what we saw from 11th Hour Racing Team as well. You can see them actually at the top of your screen as we follow Bia Term downwind. Now another boat that is enjoying perhaps a little bit more breeze, but maybe a change in the wind angle from when 11th Hour Racing Team sailed through these waters. Paul Mia, there's just getting information from Alan Roberts, who's navigating of what marks he needs to be seeing, what he's going to be passing, what the angle is, and whether he needs to come up or go down. So uh, now they're coming up to cross each other. They're checking then they're going to cross each other and uh, we'll see if they wave at each other. So long as they can get clear of what's to leeward, I think there's some pretty solid patch of land to leeward that they've got to get round first as well. So it's a balance, always a compromise. So there we go, that's uh, second. Team Holson PRB passing by via term in third, two boats going in opposite directions. It's perfect, isn't it? I mean, six jibes for the leaders, zero for Team Olsen PRB, yet with an enormous slowdown needed. And you could argue whether that was sensible or not. But for Biotum, yeah, just a simple case of we want to go that way and the wind is just lining up perfectly. They, they seem like they're sailing the most efficient angle to the breeze. So they are now going to be getting themselves ready. And they've already got that J2 out there. See, there are two sails out now, the big masthead and that J2. The white mark is just out of camera shot, just to the right-hand side. 
just going to come into shot there. There we go, the white square. They're going to go around left-hand turn. They're coming in with a bit more pressure, so it's then a little bit harder to do all those manoeuvres and change all those aspects on the boat. Lovely puff just there, just on the water, just ready for them, just as they turn up onto the breeze. There's power in the fact that they've gone tighter. There's also more power in the fact that there's a gust right there. They get that J2 in. Nobody that I have seen round this mark so far has actually got that J2 in on this tack as they have gone round. They look stalled there. This is very dangerous. They've done a big turn up, but they've just got enough momentum to get themselves through the breeze. It, it, I mean, that might have been unfair of me there. They might actually have slowed down that last quarter of that turn just in order to get that last bit of the J2 in. Guyot Environment Team Europe and Team Militia as well. And you can see who, <laughs> who the, uh, the spectators are welcoming in because behind Guyot Environment Team Europe, with their own escort, there's also a very enthusiastic escort for Team Militia. Need to just take a little bit of a break from the racing and the performance just to talk about what a significant moment it is for Guyot Environment Team Europe to do this keel flyby. We've got two Germans on board this boat. We've got Robert Stanjek and also we've got Philip uh, Kusecki and both of them really wanted to be here for this moment. You can hear the cheers as people are welcoming them in. I mean, this is the hero. This is John Kostecki from 2002 coming in to inspire the next generation. This, well, somebody ashore in a boat there is a young Boris Herman of the future. One boat going north, one boat going south, and all the spectators staying with Team Militia on their way down. Team Militia are coming down with some good breeze. They're up at around 11, 12 knots. Um, Guyot Environment Team Europe ahead um, have felt the pressure of Boris Herman. Will Harris and the rest of the crew coming in. Robert Stanjek and the rest of the crew on board Guyot Environment Team Europe. It's a very special moment here to be sailing into Kiel. A very important moment for this team considering everything that they have been through in this edition of the Ocean Race. It's crazy, huh? Yeah? Uh, Germans, look how many boats. It's unbelievable. White Mark coming into view now. This is the left-hand turn for Guyot Environment Team Europe. The breeze then filling as they came on the breeze. And actually, they were really nice. They allowed the trim to come on before they turned up, which is a really nice way for the trimmers to get max trim on. Got their J3 up now. So this is going to be a bit of a difficult turn here. They're going to have to let the... J2 blow through on the J3. It looks like it's going to do it. Certainly the bulk of the sail is now through. Now the sheet comes on. Yeah, and Team Militia are now coming down as uh, Guyot Environment Team Europe on the left-hand top corner of your screen is going upwind. Massively unique. I mean, how often can you wave and cheer this close to the action while they're still racing? I mean, it rarely happens. A big moment for Team Militia coming down here. The white mark, the rounding mark here, but the big thing for Boris Herman and the rest of the crew is what this moment means for them at this stage of the ocean race. Most of my racing training was here. And most of my races too, the Kieler Woche, for example. And a lot of cruising with my dad. We come through the North uh, Channel, North to the Kiel Canal, out here. A Boris Herman of Team Militia rounding the mark and giving us an idea as to how much of his sailing has been spent on these waters. And what a big gulf it must feel like for anybody in any sport when you are standing at that same patch of racetrack where, where you were as a child and now you're here in a top of the line boat in one of the biggest competitions in your sport. It must feel quite dizzying. Another tack, as we saw with Guyot Environment Team Europe, with the J3 up, the smaller of the head sails furled, which means a, a little bit harder work uh, uh, on the trimmers. We forgot to put the rudder down. <laughs> <laughs> did you just hear that? I love him. He got so excited around the mark waving at people. They did a manoeuvre and he had the wrong rudder in the water. But they are safely round and now safely upwind. And what really a moment for Team Militia. Really, really good boat, good boat speed. Leaving. 
they've had the best breeze out of anybody who has built for team after team after team. And it, it is almost like the city giving Team Militia that last little push just to close up to the winners as much as they can. Well, these were the times for all of our teams around that flyby mark. And for the leaders, 11th hour racing team, you can see at 22, 16, 37, how much of a lead they had against second place team Holton PRB. Bio Term and Paul Mayer was round in third, and then Guyo Environment Team Europe round in fourth sometime after. And Team Militia managing to close down a little bit from the distance they had before and doing some good damage limitation. And we'll have to see how well Boris Herman can continue to catch up.